Hello, Elizabeth here, and today I'm going to show you how I made this rhinestone light switch cover. Please pay no attention to the weird stain on the wall. I had an unfortunate incident with a candle and you can blame Bath & Body Works for that. This is a super quick rhinestone project and a great way to add a little touch of bling to your home. I'm gonna walk you through everything step by step. I started with this plain white light switch cover and set the screws aside. First, I sanded the entire surface with sandpaper to give it a rough texture, which will help the glue and the rhinestones to adhere to it better. Then I gave it a wipe with some rubbing alcohol to remove the dust and any dirt or oil that could be on the surface. My favorite glue for rhinestone projects is called Gem Tack by the brand Beacon, and I transfer it into a precision tip bottle. I like to use a wax pencil that can be sharpened to pick up and place my stones. You only need one size of rhinestone for this project. I will be using Crystal AB rhinestones in the size SS16. There are links to all the products I'm using in the description of this video. For this project, I did a grid pattern where all the stones are placed side by side so that they would fit really nicely inside the rectangular shape. I started by outlining the inner cutout where the light switch will be. I applied a thin line of gem tack along the bottom edge and placed the rhinestones side by side making sure that the stones on the two outer corners lined up to sit alongside the outer edges of the cutout. You might need to do a little bit of nudging to get them all evenly spaced. Then I did the same thing along the top edge and then along each side to connect all four lines of rhinestones. I made sure that the top and bottom edges had the same amount of rhinestones and that the two side edges had the same amount of rhinestones. Next, I continued the lines along the top and bottom edges outward towards the outside edges of the switch cover, again making sure that both sides had the same number of stones. Then I continued from the outer edges to the four corners of the switch cover. I did all of this first to set the spacing of my rows so that they will fit perfectly inside the shape of the cover. If you just start at one end and work your way up, fitting everything together as tightly as possible, you'll probably end up with things being squished and not having quite enough room when you get to the end. But once you get this guideline set, you will have the perfect amount of space for all the stones to sit side by side. Next, I filled in the top and bottom parts of the cover that surround the holes for the screws. When I got to the holes, I just skipped over them and continued the rows on the other side. The grid pattern looks best if all your spacing is perfectly even, so I made sure to keep nudging everything around as needed to make sure my lines were nice and level.
Lastly, I filled in the sides, just following the rows I had already made and placing each stone side by side. You may have some of the gem tack spilling through in between your stones, and that's okay, it will dry clear and look great when it's done. You don't want to have a ton of excess glue making a huge mess, but it's better to have a bit too much than too little so that the stones don't fall off. Gemtac is a forgiving glue that dries slowly, so if you find that your spacing has gone a bit wonky or your rows are starting to tilt, you should have no problem going back and nudging things around until they are sitting the way you want. You can do this with any size of rhinestone and just follow the same steps to make sure your spacing is correct. And that's all there is to it. I got this done in under an hour, so it's a nice quick one if you don't want to commit to a full tumbler. And it's a great way to practice precise placement. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment letting me know what you would like to see next. See you later.